Hello, hello, and good evening, everyone. Uh, welcome back. We are here for yet another uh, cast from the good old Nexus Gaming series. Uh, tonight, we're going into Sea East, a uh, division that I've played in recently and that we've seen a, a few casts from here on my channel, um, but which is always, uh, I think, one of my favorites to watch, uh, in part because you get to see some really good decision making, uh, but you also get to see some spice and some stuff that uh, is good learning experience uh, for both sides. But we've already got a lobby made, so I'm going to go ahead and jump into info for a matchup. Our teams tonight are going to be uh, Zirconium League on the right and Prime Apes on the left. The, both of them so far have been doing pretty well. We can take a look at the standings. Prime Apes sitting at fifth right now with seven points, whereas Zirconium is sitting in eighth with five points. And if you want to go a bit deeper into that, uh, we can look at this and Prime Apes currently sitting at 2 2 game score uh, with a 6 and 5 map score. So doing pretty well, uh, taking some maps off of the opponents who beat them and um, ha having some maps taken by the teams they're beating. So back and forth. And it's very similar for Zirconium League as they are 2 and 1 in game score, so one less game, uh, which is part of why they're going to be a bit lower for the moment. Um, and they're sitting at 5 and 4 map score. So again, two very balanced teams have been able to take some maps off of uh, the opponents who are beating them, and I think both definitely have a chance to make some really good plays throughout the series. Um, so looking at the two teams that we have here, um, something that is interesting about Zirconium League is they have frequently this season swapped players uh, mid-series. So for the second map, they'll have some players switch out, normally uh, their healer and DPS, I believe, but uh, they do that is something which you don't really see that often is teams switching up players um, in the middle of a series and it can allow for a really interesting dynamic which has allowed for them to come back in some series where they started off behind um, losing the first map so we'll have to watch for that see if they go for that during this series um, prime apes i believe pretty new series pretty new team at least uh i know the team is i'm not sure about the players but excited to see how they're going to do as they've been performing pretty well so far during this season uh, we can go ahead and take a look to start off at the map info here. Prime Apes are the home team and won the coin flip. They wanted to have the map pick, uh, so they banned out Dragonshire and, Alter and Sky Temple, sorry, uh, where we saw Zirconium League banning out Battlefield of Eternity and Infernal Shrines. So we had Prime Apes deciding to take us on over to uh, Volskaya Foundry for our first map of the evening, uh, which we will be jumping into here shortly. Just uh, waiting to... <laughs> uh, just waiting a moment here. Uh, let, gotta finish up telling you guys stuff and getting my info in here. Make sure that I am ready and have the correct info for these teams. Um, and I believe that I do. All right, perfect. I'm gonna go ahead and give them my R, and we can hopefully jump into this first map here shortly, but uh, let me know here in chat who you're rooting for, who brought you here, and uh, how you're feeling about it. Um, hopefully, this is gonna be a great series. Uh, I could definitely, I would honestly be expecting this series to go to three maps. I don't say that very often, but looking at how these teams have been performing, I think it's very likely that we see a third map coming out here between these two. Um, so, looks like we're just waiting on one team. Sorry, one moment, getting a message. Oh, but it looks like we're going to be jumping into this draft shortly here, so I will have to respond to that later. As we're starting off here on Volskaya Foundry, uh, of course Volskaya Foundry is a very brawly map, so heroes, they vary a lot here. You can see macro focus, you can see globals, you can see split push, uh, you can see more team fight and just complete, completely ignore macro um, because there is so much that you can do on this map thanks to the long objective uh, it's relatively big size, it's not huge, but it's not tiny. Uh, and then the fact that there is obviously a camp focus, especially for items. So that's where you might see some focus placed throughout this series. 
um, or at least for this first map, is we're going to start off with the Zero Tool ban from Zirconium League. Not wanting to have to deal with that. Well, I assume that that means that Prime Apes have a uh, Zero Tool player, and those are always scary to go against if they are able to execute well. Sorry about that. I'm just trying to figure out if I can help my stream out here a little bit as it is struggling. I'm going to go ahead and turn down the bit rate a bit for the moment. Hopefully that will help out. But uh, looking back at the band, sorry, we had Johanna banned here for the side of Prime Apes, not wanting to have to deal with the sturdy frontliner who really just uh, doesn't really struggle against much of anything. Um, and then the Sylvanas ban, of course, denying another strong assassin who is especially potent since the recent tower changes uh, with the most recent Nexus anomaly, which uh, makes being able to push in very effective. And last but not least, a Probius ban. Uh, for those of you new to these teams, you might be a bit surprised by that, as we see the first pick onto Zul from Shadonis here, still high priority on that hero. But Tlems from the side of Zirconium League is a very, very strong Probius player who has warranted a lot of respect bans across the seasons that he has been playing in the Nexus gaming series. So um, for, for uh, against this team, not super uh, unexpected. It's a perfect day for some the response gonna be ETC here, as well as Junkrat. Junkrat very strong for being able to control the point, especially with his uh, Chattering Teeth build, as we're actually gonna see Tracer recently uh, unbanned as well as Anduin picked up here for the side of Zirconium League. So as I was saying, Junkrat really great at stalling the point, just not laying the enemy team on, uh, thanks to his chattering teeth uh, traps there. And ETC, of course, just an all-around solid hero and solid tank. Really the best, I would say, all-around tank uh, after Johanna, which was, of course, banned out there. Next ban, going to be onto the Kael'thas from the side of Prime Apes strong mage who can uh, really punish the clump that you kind of are forced into on the point of the objective uh, with his living bombs and then Chen gonna be the final ban in this first map taking away some potential aggression from the side of our blue team here. Next two picks we might see a healer taken here um, as well as the offlaner and a one DPS it could be a mage could be a sustain could be some uh, something fancy a third melee or Something along those lines is always fun, I think, on this map. And it is going to be a third melee, as we're going to see Maiev picked up here. Always interesting to see that hero taken, because it can be uh, very impactful if it works out, but it can also really struggle if you aren't able to execute on it. So we'll have to watch the play of Zirconium League to see if they're able to play around it here, as they're going to be picking up Muradin for their main tank, the hero who can kind of get onto the back line of Junkrat, um, but also maybe a little bit less vulnerable to Maiev with his uh, Dwarf Toss and big, big health bar. And then Tassadar, super, super powerful poke mage, able to really destroy a back line and even a front line if he's able to scale up. And with that, the last pick for the off lane. Um, well, actually, I suppose it could be a main tank as well, but it's going to be the Varian here for the side of Prime Apes, uh, able to lock down the Tracer, of course, with Taunt. Um, I imagine that is probably the main reason for the pick at this moment. But you know what? Let me know. Who, who do you think got the better side of the draft here? I think uh, if I had to give it over to one of the teams, I would probably say Prime Apes. I think that uh, while the Maiev is very high execution, the Varian is not really, and it could really punish the Tracer pick. But we'll have to see if Tlems is able to play around it. Uh, as I know that they are definitely a very capable player. So we'll have to watch, see how these teams perform in our first map here on Volskaya Foundry. All right. So hopefully, uh, hopefully, looks like the problems are starting to clear up a little bit with the drop frames there. There was quite, 
quite a bit early on in the stream there. I know that uh, people downstairs are watching TV, so that might be part of the issue, but hopefully it'll clear up here as we jump into our first map of this best of three series. On the left, we have the Primates. Um, starting off for them, it is going to be G Prime on the Junkrat, Hiva on the Maiev, 11th on the Deckard Kane, uh, Joshua Scott playing Varian and Frozen on ETC. Their opponents are Zirconium League, led by uh, Dead, Dead On here on the Muradin, a Weathervane on Tastar, Tlems on Tracer, Lulu on the Anduin, and Shadonis playing the Zul. We will see if these uh, OP quote unquote heroes in the Tracer and Zul are going to be, and even the Tastar, are going to be enough to carry them in this first game, or if we see the win coming out from the blue team. So looking at a bit more damage focus for the Deckard here, starting off with the field study, going to give him some very big damage on his roots if he's able to successfully and continuously land them in Hyva, looking for the cleaves and the multi-tethers with Bonds of Justice here to increase the damage on those pulls. Um, interestingly enough, we do have an auto attack build starting up for the Tassadar, Kaidurin Ambulant picked. Not something you see picked a lot, in part because of uh, the fact that it's shorter range than his Q or W builds, and uh, when you unlock that bounce, it can actually be kind of punishing if you're trying to push, because you can accidentally bounce to a hero and then draw tower aggro, but we will see if that works out for him here, as both teams are just going ahead and starting off on their double rotations playing the game uh, as you do in the early early moments. Uh, Shadonis doing a great job of pushing in against Joshua Scott here. Varian, of course, uh, struggles a lot pre-4, uh, but always struggles in the wave clear department. That being said, Hiva on the Maiev picking up the turret for the side of the blue team well before we see a Weathervane in Lulu uh, picking up theirs for the side of Zirconium League. So, Nice rotation there from the blue team to make sure that they are getting that done as soon as possible. For the moment, both teams not really looking for too much aggression. Uh, we do have Shadona still pushing in a little bit, and uh, Joshua Scott we did see have had to use his tap there, but otherwise both teams are kind of just rotating around each other. We see the occasional trap placed in an aggressive bush or... Uh, Stormbolt thrown out, but neither team really committing too much. That being said, Hiva going in hard for a triple pull there. Uh, the Concussion Mine to follow it up, but not going to be enough to get any kills. And now Frozen on the ETC, being put under pressure by Tlems and Dead on here. And Health Bar is going to get a bit low, but oh, Frozen actually getting very low. Went for the potion, but had to back up so that Tracer couldn't finish him off. Uh, very, very well executed there by Tlems on the Tracer, harassing the front line. As it looks like chat is going to be in favor of Zirconium League here uh, for this matchup tonight. We'll see if they are right or if Primeapes is able to come out on top as the Maiev play has been looking pretty good so far. Again, both teams just heading off to their camps. Hyva is currently soloing the Siege camp for Primeapes, whereas again we have Tassadar played by a Weathervane as well as Anduin here by Lulu focusing on their own Siege camp. We'll see they're not going to hold it, and it looks like Hiva will not be either. Both teams just going to immediately grab it and make their way towards this first objective point here. Level 4s are in for both teams. Looking at Tracer so far, we have the 1-2 punch for the reduced cooldown on melee, as well as the pulse generator here, uh, allowing for some extra sustain when that uh, pulse bomb comes out from the side of Tlems. Right now, it is 5v4 as Joshua Scott just now rotates in. He does have the taunt, as I mentioned, and is going for it on the Murd in there. Dead on getting very low, gets pulled back in after the Dwarf Toss, and he is getting very, very low, going to go down as the first blood for this match. Um, but, ooh, Shadonis actually getting very low as well, and Ruby getting tons of value, helping to sustain up the blue team as they did have some low members there, but going to be able to force Zirconium League off of this first point here. All right, it is going to be a weather vane, just going and heading up here to the top lane. Currently sitting at 115 stacks on that Kaidaran amulet, already getting the first bounce on his auto attack, and going to push that lane in, forcing Junkrat to respond, which should allow for Zirconium League to push in if they so wish, but they're gonna first go ahead and take their turret 
make sure that they aren't falling behind on the item count here for this map as the items are of course very potent in helping to zone the enemy team off of the point and help your team to uh, just get some extra damage output with the turrets or some extra healing with the support camp which uh, was actually not really contested so far by these teams but we'll have to see if that continues in the late game as dead on going to get the taunt Shadonis gets hit by a very nice concussion mine into the back line of the blue team but going to be able to escape dead on getting hit pretty hard by Haiba on the Maev, but also surviving for the moment. Uh, but red team is looking significantly more chunked than the blue team as Shadonis gets slid on as well as dead on, and that is the first kill of this second engagement. Again though, against Zirconium League, and ooh, a bit of a mistimed uh, detonation on the concussion mine. Uh, but the kill will still come out onto Tassadar, meaning that overall we're looking at 3-0 and in kills so far, and this first objective going pretty much uncontested on the percentage for the side of the Prime Apes. Gonna put ETC and Deckard in it and start pulling the normal rotation that you'd see. Gonna go for some damage on this mid wall and then likely going to rotate up unless they see no response in this mid lane, um, but they are going to inevitably end up rotating up here. Uh, Tracer actually putting some good damage onto my up. Going to have to use the recall there to avoid getting taken out by the Punisher, though. Zirconium League struggling a little bit in the early game, but we're going to have to see if they are able to turn it around here as they are focusing onto this Punisher. Sorry again for the connection issues um, here now with the map, but looking like a nice and early controlled lead for the side of the Prime Apes, able to get that first fountain, which will of course help them in the next objective. But level 10s will be here soon, uh, as there isn't too much of an XP difference. So don't count Zirconium League out yet. That being said, with 10s in for the side of the blue team, we are going to see the Rip Tire, the Warbringer for the extra charges and mobility there for Varian, the Warden's Cage, stay a while and listen, and Mosh Pit. So a lot of CC and uh, potential to enable Junkrat to really, really get those huge blow ups with the. Uh, rip tire as we also see the concussion mine build coming in a much higher skill build I would say than the steel trap build but G prime has been proving that he is able to play junk rat well enough that he's able to uh, execute that build uh, and we'll we'll have to see uh, how that works as the game continues and heroes do get a little bit healthier here as we do have level tins coming in for the side of zirconium league it is going to be the uh, Poison Nova, the Archon, Pulse Rounds, Light Bomb, and the Avatar for our blue red team here. Sorry about that. Okay, looks like we were dropping a bunch. I'm going to lower the bit rate one more time. Sorry again about that. Um, I never really have these issues, so uh, this is a first for me. Um, that being said, looking at our teams right now, uh, really just, again, rotating around each other. These teams aren't really looking for fights where it isn't necessary. Um, definitely not wanting to give up the lead or give a bigger lead, but with that being said, a nice pull onto Tracer and onto Murden is going to result in the pull into the Warden Cage. Slams, though, harassing the back line, doing a great job on the Tracer to try and uh, pull away the blue team and overall uh, it's just two ults used by the side of the prime apes whereas only light bomb was used by the side of zirconium league so really a positive trade for them um, i'd like to see them maybe rotate zul in here and look at this support beacon as they do know that the warden's cage and rip tire are down that being said the taunt onto shadonis would be really bad here he gets the poison nose off but he is going to fall and Tlem's gonna have to be careful here as on the tracer as well as they get chunked pretty heavily and the ruby again giving so much healing as the uh, grouped up members of zirconium league are allowing for decker to get huge procs off of that prime apes going to start onto the healing beacon as they know zul will be dead for a good bit and uh really nothing that zirconium league can do this is just going to be the item advantage for the side of the blue team uh, only the healing beacon advantage here as a weather vane does have a um, <laughs> does have a turret for his team but again a little bit of a lead here edging out once again for the blue team as we're having 13s coming in for both teams uh, actually the jumper coming in here for tracer something you 
might be surprised by if you knew how uh, the old Tracer builds, but um, Untouchable, of course, is not allowed. Talent is banned as it has a bugged interaction, so that is going to be the choice here for Tracer as the recall is forced out and Tlem's not able to get away from the rip tire. Great flank there from Joshua Scott on the Varian, and again, Primeape's able to secure an early advantage and always up when it comes to these team fights. Forcing out the Archon as the disengage for the side of Zirconium League. But it is going to be, again, uh, Primeapes taking the point. With that, the play is just going to be rotate and steal some items, it looks like, potentially, from the side of Zirconium League. Maybe not take the items, but just try and soak up, make sure you're not falling too far behind on XP. Um, actually, it looks like the Weatherbane will be going onto the enemy team's turret here with his Tassadar. And we'll have to see. I don't think they can get back up here in time now as a result. So they're willing to just trade it out here. Ooh, Joshua Scott on the variant comes up, does isn't able to pick up the turret thanks to the very fast uh, ticking damage from Tassadar, able to continuously cancel that channel. But as I said, that's just an uncontested point and the second Triglav protect protector of the game coming out here for the Prime Apes. Gonna start by pushing into this top lane uh, and should be able to get that very easily. Tlem's trying to get some damage out and does chunk G Prime pretty decently, but the healing potions of Deckard coming clutch there has the uh, super healing potion at level 13, so that is able to pretty much immediately heal Junkrat back up with just one potion. Now it is going to be the Triglav looking at the mid lane. Looks like they aren't going to uh, risk losing too much health on this mid fort. And immediately going to rotate down again, just looking for the fountain to give them that much more of an advantage for the next objective here. As their level lead is beginning to get bigger and bigger. Taunt after the concussion mine onto dead on. Going to get pulled back in and I think that is another kill onto the Muradin. No, he does get pulled away by Lulu. Nice play there from the healer as Avatar also came out to help keep Muradin alive, but this push is relentless and the fountain's already down and both towers going to fall alongside it. Uh, Primeape's looking very strong here with the Maya and a Weatherbane now, the next one to get pulled and taunted. Able to pop the Archon in time to keep himself alive, but the Concussion Mine might turn that around. <laughs> Luckily though, he gets saved by the explosion of the Triglav as it's going to push him away from the blue team once again. But with that, Prime Apes have the level 16s and are going to be looking for this turret camp. Uh, they know that Zul is currently in the top lane, so they feel more than safe about just going ahead and taking that for themselves. Again, meaning that they are ahead in the items here by that one healing beacon, which they didn't even have to use as the top objective was uncontested after that first kill. Rotation's just gonna keep on going. Junkrat using his concussion mind to make sure that Zirconium League isn't trying to do anything cheeky and get onto the support beacon here. But it looks like Prime Apes are more than happy to take it for themselves. I'm going to start rotating around it, keeping Varian with them in case one of the teams tries for it. And he's gonna be sitting in the bush looking for a taunt here, going to get it onto Dead On on the Muradin. Power slide coming out onto two. Mosh gets interrupted as a light bomb hits onto multiple, but. <laughs> not going to be enough as two going to fall for the side of Zirconium League. Huge AoE coming out from Maev and from Junkrat. We did see ETC fall, but in the end it's going to be three for one here in favor of Primeapes. Again, executing super well on this Maev Junkrat combo. Uh, the taunts, of course, coming in clutch, getting the kills and getting the setups for these team fights. Really just showing uh, exactly how to play around this Warden's Cage setup. With that, it looks like teams going to uh, just have to sit back here, at least from the side of Zirconium League. Another turret going to be taken here for the blue team, which means that they're now up uh, the turret and healing beacon as all items were used in that team fight over the healing beacon. And now a level lead for the side of Primeapes means that they can potentially get 20 over the next objective point, whereas it's not likely to see that coming out from the side of Zirconium League as they are currently down uh, almost a full level catching up a little bit thanks to being able to just kind of split off and soak the sidelines but 
they're gonna have to really uh really work for that xp if they want to make sure that they aren't falling behind by the storm talents here and it looks like actually maybe looking for a little bit of aggression dead on even going for the storm bolt against Mayev, who could have tethered him back in so a bit of a risky play there but uh not going to result in anything coming of it from either side that being said Ooh, Hyva tried to get the cleave there, didn't end up coming out. This might be a potential fight for the side of Zirconium League. Um, as Varian rotates in, but Tassar getting hit by the Concussion Mine twice, pushed into the blue team, barely gets pulled away by Lulu. Well played by the Anduin, of course, again. But this is such a split team fight. Maev going in, looks like Frozen on the ETC will be the first to fall, though. Followed up by Zul, though. 11th barely gets out the Healing Beacon again before falling on the Decker Kane, but so many low. Both of the damage very low on the side of Zirconian League, and they're in retreat, just trying to stay alive. Hyva getting resets on the Fan of Knives onto multiple, but not able to finish out any of the kills, so finally a team fight favorable for Zirconium League as they trade that one two for one here, and that is going to be very important experience for them, and also going to mean evening up the items as this minion wave in the bottom lane was able to secure the healing beacon so really other than the level 20s which will be here soon which zirconium leak should be able to soak up in time we're not gonna see a advantage in talents or in items or in position on the map really for this objective other than the siege camp uh which did just clear out um so we'll say other than the catapults which will be pushing in the top lane for the side of prime apes here Looks like the channel will start for Zirconium League as Prime Apes still waiting for their tank and healer to get back as they just respawned. Um, meanwhile though, Shadon is trying to soak in the mid lane, gonna get hit by the taunt by Mayav, gonna use his uh, bone armor there to try and keep himself alive, but with Junkrat rotating in, not sure if he'll be able to, ooh, he barely will, and actually the Riptire used to try and secure the kill, that is a big ult down. He did go into the extra oomph, which means it will uh, be 25 seconds off of that cooldown, but that is a very big miskill as well as a very big cooldown um, as the rest of the 20s for the side of the blue team going to be Vigilance for the side of Varian, Shadow Orb Vengeance for Maiev, Respect the Elderly, and Death Metal. Looking for the looking for the tactical int value. Uh, we saw a, gr a great example of that the other night from Gola on the side of Annie Oak League over in Sea West. We'll have to see if Frozen is able to get similar value on his ETC tonight. Other ults going to be Andariel's Visage, Kala's Gift, Com Composition B actually here, Glyph of Faith, and the Rewind. Um, so very strong talents from both sides. Ward's Cage get popped pretty early here. Joshua Scott in the variant is off on the side, but a huge Poison Nova comes out doing so much AoE and healing Zul up so much. The Light Bomb gonna get hit multiple, and so much Dot is on the blue team trying to keep themselves alive here but not able to get any picks onto anyone and they're in the retreat Varian going to fall but dead on caught out a little bit but is he as he gets the kill onto Maev and is able to escape it's a two for O trade in favor of Zirconium League coming back in this game they still haven't taken a fort but if you look at the map only one fort is down as the mid lane has barely been able to hold on we'll have to see if this wave clears it out but for the moment Zirconium League is going for the push they're up two members here and they're gonna get the fort in the bottom lane very easily and start looking for the keep here. G Prime gonna get stuck with the pulse bomb there from Tracer. Take a nice chunk of damage off of him, will force out the tap there. But the defense is uh, really the main focus here for Prime Apes. Um, I do think the mid lane fort is going to fall, so watch that. Uh, that will be 50 seconds off of the cooldown for Junkrat there. He hit the protector and Murad in there with that. But it looks like this will be the first keep of the game going in favor of Zirconium League and they see 10 seconds more on two death timers. They see the Protector at over 50%. They're going to try and end it all right here, right now. And they are uh, very possibly going to be able to do that. Tracer doing a good job of zoning out the rest of the team, but going to get taunted, silenced by Deckard. Barely gets away though, and the core is down to 50%. Will Zirconium League be able to end it here? They're being zoned out. Mosh Pit whiffs though, and that's going to be game one. Clutch comeback, won by Zirconium League here. Can't really ask for a closer game one, can you? Um, well, no. You you can get you can get the one to one on Towers of Doom. You can get all kinds of things closer, but that was an insane first map. Well played from both sides. Looking at the statistics here, Junkrat. 
put out so much damage that game, 77,000 hero damage, as well as 134,000 siege damage, only here with more being the Zul who is double soaking almost the entire game for the side of uh, Zirconium League there. That being said, Tassadar able to put out a lot of damage for his team as well as Tracer, um, though really if you look at it, the damage was consistently higher for the blue team, it was just that one last fight loss that allowed for Zirconium League to come back and uh, really taking advantage of the few moments where they had an advantage towards the later half of the game and once they were able to find that even footing uh, on the bottom point they were able to take the map and uh, start off the series 1-0 in their favor so really well played there from them. All right, we should hopefully be getting some info here from uh, from our uh, first team, the blue team, uh, as they did lose that. They should be uh, deciding if they want map pick or first pick. That was their map pick, which they opted for having won the uh, coin toss. So we'll have to see if with the remaining map pool, they want to go for the map pick again, go for something where they think uh, they can come out on top. As Volskaya didn't quite work out, granted, it is of course important, they were ahead for the majority of that game. That was, uh, it was looking like it was Prime Apes who would take the game up until the very last moment. So overall, I think uh, they can't be too shook up about it. Um, don't let, don't get down on yourselves in these kind of moments. And if you're able to keep a level head, um, say, hey, it was a fluke. We are playing out of our minds as they definitely were. <laughs> Uh, they should be able to do well uh, in the rest of this series as it looks like they are going to go for the map pick again here, inviting me to the lobby already. Wonderful. And their map pick will be Towers of Doom here, picked by Prime Apes once again. So they were confident enough in their uh, team fighting and their rotations that they're going to take the map pick again here and see if it can work out for them on Towers of Doom. Uh, very skill based and uh, also late game focus map here as it almost almost always gets to 20 you really need a super dominant early game to be able to consistently win um, before level 20 I would say all right I think it's an interesting map pick. I think where they shined was the team fighting, which will be quite important. Um, sorry, one moment here. Here, give me one moment. Let me check my stream. As I'm being told, it's actually even a slideshow, which would definitely not be what we want here. <laughs> I would feel really bad if that was the case. Um, I mean, it looks fine at the moment. I imagine once we get in game, it's definitely looking worse. But for the moment, we are doing okay. All right, well, hopefully hopefully stream will stabilize out a bit. Once again, sorry about the issues. Um, <laughs> uh, I just, I, uh, yeah, I, I'm sorry I make you feel old, Tlems. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I'm, I'm a 19 year old with too much time on my hands, so here I am pretty much. Um, let me see, I don't think I'm able to change the, yeah, I'm not able to change the output unless I completely restart the stream as far as, uh... <laughs> as far as I, uh... I, I, I can't change it as far as the uh, resolution, unfortunately, until, unless I completely restart the entire stream. We'll see, hopefully this next map will go a bit better. I haven't dropped any frames in the past uh, few minutes here. 
So hopefully, fingers crossed, things are gonna work out a little bit better here. I'll watch though, if we're really struggling during the game, I might ask for a pause and uh, restart the stream here. But for the moment, we're gonna go ahead and jump into this next map here on Towers of Doom. Everyone's ready and uh, should be a good one. I'm excited for it as that last map was a nail biter for sure. Uh, risky end attempt there from the side of Zirconium League, but paying off um, getting that last minute win in the uh, in the team fight there. Starting out though on Towers of Doom, once again this is a map with a lot of options. You can look for a lot of macro play here. Globals are pretty frequent as well as um, j just uh, heroes who are able to put on a lot of siege pressure against the turrets and forts especially in the foreman here as that is normally focused on the bottom lane where those two sapper camps are controlling uh the two sapper camps and the oh or not all right looks like uh maybe not uh jumping in quite yet someone leaving there not sure if we saw something i'm not sure what the issue was I don't know if it was just an internet disconnect or what. One moment here. Nothing, okay, I don't, I don't know what the error was, but uh, yeah, so looking at Towers of Doom, you're looking at uh, four, a four man that can either rotate mid and uh, safely and then get back bot very quickly, uh, or an offlaner who can do double soaking as you want to spend as much time as you can in the bottom lane as that is where again there's two sapper camps there's um, the two of the objectives uh, are in the bottom lane where or right next to the bottom lane so controlling the enemy team's tower there uh, really limits their way to approach as well as escape uh, so very important to be able to control that bottom lane if possible as we're going to jump back into our first draft here Towers on Towers of Doom. of Doom. Into our draft. I don't, I don't think it's the first draft of, yeah, I don't know. It's not first draft. I, I think I might have said first draft, but something that, as I said, is something that we do see pretty interesting here from the side of uh, our red team is the roster swaps. Again, coming in for them as they're swapping out uh, Umbob and a Weathervane for Lulu and Tlem's there. Well, or not a Weathervane, Pet Wolverine. Pet Wolverine is the one swapping in here. So mixing up the roster on the second map, we'll have to see how it works out for them uh, and if they're able to come out on top. First ban is, oh, oh, and it looks like the issue was the first pick. So this was the map pick of Zirconium League not of um, Prime Apes. Looks like Prime Apes didn't quite pick up onto the switch on the players here as they are going to ban out Tlemz's Probius once again, which is uh, quite unfortunate there, um, getting pretty much a free ban on the side of Zirconium League. But that's maybe part of their strategy with switching out the players here. They're able to bait out bans onto Probius. They're able to make sure that they're staying fresh and uh, we'll see how it works out for them here as they're gonna ban Li Ming, a uh, very strong mage thanks to her poke and her team fight capabilities. The resets are of course absolutely destructive if you're able to get that first one during a team fight. There's almost no stopping uh, the pain train from coming, uh, especially if you have a strong second DPS, uh, something like a gray main is frequently seen there. Zul going to be the ban from the side of Prime Apes, they don't want it for themselves in the first pick slot, but they aren't willing to go against it as at level 20, I do think that that upgrade to the Poison Nova was enough and part of what pushed it over in favor of Zirconium League in that last team fight, it seemed like the entire health bars of the side of the Prime Apes were <laughs> colored yellow by that Poison Nova as the final ban is going to be onto Johanna and now looking for the first pick from the side of the Prime Apes. All right, gonna hold it out a little bit, but it's going to be the mouthail for the offlane. So putting a high, high priority on the double soak here 
And Malphail, of course, also very strong for his ability in team fights and in killing <laughs> the other offlaner or uh, really a single target here. Able to use a lot of percent damage very effectively and be really hard to kill if he's able to play around the sides of a fight. So watch for that from uh, Joshua Scott here on the Malthale. That being said, we're going to have Leoric, another double soaker, of course, picked up for Shadonis. And ETC, swapping hands here, going to be played by Dead On in this map. So a good early, er, good early pickups here from the side of Zirconium League. I do like, honestly, the Leoric a bit more than the early Malthale, as uh, Malthale is definitely a lot more gankable. That being said, Hyva has gotten their Zeratul. It wasn't banned out this time, and they're going to pick it up, uh, as well as 11th going to pick up the Stukov here for the healer selection. We'll have to see if the Zeratul that was banned out is going to pay off here. Uh, and the Stukov, I think, is a very strong healer right now. Excited to see how that works out. As uh, <laughs> I, I've kind of found that he is impossible to kill right now, so we'll have to see if that can... Uh, can, if that can be the case and if 11th is able to help make sure the rest of his team is staying alive here as well as Garrosh going to be the ban from the side of Zirconium League a bit afraid of the potential throws and uh, ganks from the Garrosh as well as invades can be very scary to go against Garrosh in those situations so going to go ahead and get rid of it all right I'm gonna go ahead and start the pull up a bit here and start running up the pull here as we see the ban onto Sylvanas this time from the side of the Prime Apes. Zirconium League took it away last game but it looks like Prime Apes not planning on taking it this game and afraid of going against it as again her siege pressure is very very scary in this current meta with the tower towers being very oppressive um, if you're trying to push up against them. So last picks Four, or not last picks, the next two picks here are going to be again Tassadar as well as Rainer. So looking actually at a bit of a uh, double auto attack comp here potentially if we are seeing again the auto attack Tassadar, which makes me think, are we going to see the Rhaegar with Bloodlust here uh, for the side of Zirconium League? That's uh, honestly what it's starting to look at like, but we will see if that is what they ultimately end up going for as final picks going in for Primates here. They're going to try and win the map here to even it up, and they're going to do it with Murden and Kael'thas being the selections here. Kael'thas, I believe, was banned out last time by, uh, I don't remember which team banned it out, actually, but going to be banned away this time by the Primates, uh, whereas Zirconium League going to have to answer the Murden and the aggression there, as well as make sure that they are not spreading the living bombs. And uh, what's the healer pick to make sure that they're getting helped out with that? Gonna be Lucio, so not looking for the Bloodlust. Uh, maybe not conf confident enough in the potential here. Or maybe just preferring Lucio here and uh, trying to maybe bait some picks out. I don't know. But those are your drafts. You can see them. And uh, honestly, I'm a bit afraid here. I think Malthale can be very, very punishable as an offlaner in that double soak position if we see good flanks from Zirconium League. But I also know that uh, the Seer tool was banned out in game one and the CC from the side of Zirconium League is not the best so that could be very scary as if he gets onto a Tassadar or a Lucio <laughs> they're gone they're they're not going to be living if this Seer tool is executed well so we'll have to see if that is indeed what ends up happening here as the Primates are going to try and tie it up here make this series even uh, hopefully won't drop too many frames during this second map here. Let me know if I am. And uh, we'll try and figure something out as bitrate has already been dropped a decent bit. Uh, I guess internet just struggling a good bit tonight. All right, but here we are on our second map. Starting off with our uh, left team here played by uh, <laughs> not played by. Uh, we're going to be Prime Apes starting off with 11th on the Stukov, Frozen on the Muradin, Hyva on Zeratul, G Prime on Kael'thas, and in the offlane, Joshua Scott playing 
the uh, mouth tail. Against them, going to be dead on on the ETC, a weather vane on Tassadar once again, Shadonis on Leoric, Umbob on Lucio, and Pet Wolverine on Raynor. It's Zirconium League, and after the comeback in game one, they're going to try and finish out the series here with a 2 0 on their map pick of Towers of Doom. Early talents are pretty much what you'd expect. Again, mentioned the auto attack build on Tassadar last game, but whew, a lot of early damage getting put onto Dead on on the ETC, showing off the fact that uh, you know ETC is a bit of a squishier tank here, can be punished, uh, and that Zeratul is looking very aggressive so far, uh, getting a lot of early damage against the red team here. As Malthale already had split off to get the top lane soak, so Shadonis gonna have to match that here be a bit behind on the rotations as we see uh, 3v4 in the bottom lane as Malthale is able to soak a bit earlier than Lyric. Lyric uh, struggles until he gets Neil Peasants at level 4, whereas with uh, thanks to On a Pale Horse at level 1, uh, Malthale able to be very successful even before the level 4. Siege Camp already started out for the side of the red team, going to get worked on by the blue team as well here but I don't think we're gonna see any invades so just uh, trading here we'll have to watch see who is able to push those in more effectively though as uh, getting this early tower damage can really show a little bit how the the map might go who's got the siege pressure who's got the uh, team fight pressure here as for the moment lane being pushed in by our blue team here and Zeratul already showing some of that aggression. Did go for the Greater Cleave, I believe it is. Yep, at level 1. And that's one Sapper in, two. And all three going in for the side of Primate. So again, pushing in pretty strong in the early game. But we did see a very strong late game from Zirconium League last game. And it looks like chat still believes in Zirconium League to take the series here. Voting for them here for game 2. Looks like Leoric and Malthil just doing their thing, rotating back and forth as we have the four mans in the bottom lane. As I mentioned, Neil Peasants is here for Leoric, although we also do see Consume Vitality, so looking for a team fight focus here, uh, trying to land the skeletal swings to get his self-sustained during the fights. Zeratul continuing the cleave build with the rending cleave here, as there is a bit of aggression back and forth onto the tanks here. 11th silencing and slowing dead on getting some pressure onto that front line but both teams really just uh, again poking a little bit but not overextending not getting too aggressive as the first objective phase starts here we should see the top lane traded out in the main fight going to be over this uh bottom point as frozen on the murden already getting aggressive while zirconium league trying to defend the point Shadonis will get the channel well before Mouthail, so he should be able to rotate in, or looks like he's going to try and interrupt a bit. I don't think that's a fight that he can win, but if he can delay, that uh, might force some rotations as we do see the Zeratul rotating out for the side of <laughs> Primeape's going to rotate back in, though, as with the Living Bombs, it's looking very likely that we're going to see Primeapes maybe take this. That being said, Frozen on the Murden, going to get hit by a lot of damage, and Weathervane really just trading those auto attacks and with the shield going to be able to uh, keep himself sustained and it looks like the first objective will trade at least two for one in favor of Zirconium League as great job delaying there by Shadonis on the Leoric. Looks like he was actually in the early game and with the level one there able to get the better of the mouth ale. We'll have to watch see if that continues here as uh, some very strong talents do come in. That being said, we do have, interestingly enough, Throwing Shade, not something you see very often. Maybe a bit of a trait build coming in for Malthale as we're going to see the Seeker in the Dark, the Engage option here for Zeratul. Uh, gonna start coming online as uh, his early game is obviously his weakest part, but potential for an invade, not going to get anything as much more than a chunk onto Frozen here on the Murden, but Really, both tr both teams just looking to be uh, a little bit aggressive where they can. And Zirconium League gonna get their sappers in and now try to defend the blue team sappers as uh, the last time we saw sappers taken, it did go in favor of Prime Apes. 
but Zirconium League eager to get it, the uh, advantage back as a nice gravity lapse from G Prime hits three. Going to get some really nice chunk out here onto the red team. Gonna force out some backs and Pet Wolverine barely surviving thanks to the uh, adrenaline rush there with the extra armor from Fighter Flight at level four. Looking at the early stats here, it is Kael'thas with the most damage uh, for his team, whereas Raynor actually a little bit higher so far for the game. Uh, did opt into Ace in the Hole at level 1, so getting that extra damage off of the slows and stuns here. And it's showing, now that being said, also what's showing is how much damage a Weather Vane is able to do on this Tassadar. I think that auto attack build is very risky, but it looks like this game, it has been very successful for a weather vane and he's getting tons of damage out that being said a huge silence and a huge slow met by a huge cleave and that's going to be first blood taking out the lucio here the healer for the side of zirconium league and uh i don't think there's any way that shadonis is able to beat out joshua scott here in the mid lane so this will be two channels going over to the side of the prime apes All right, so level 10's again a bit earlier for the blue team, and it looks like they're actually gonna go for the Void Prison setup, something you don't see very often nowadays because of uh, the fact that it can, it doesn't really get quite as much maybe solo carry potential as the Might of the Nerezim, uh, and Zeratul is a bit riskier because of the wormhole nerfs. Gonna have to always land that secret in the dark to be able to get in and get out safely. The picks for the red team, Hyperion, Archon, March of the Black King, interestingly enough, looking to avoid ganks even more so, as well as get some big team fight sustain here, as the last rites going to not get the kill on Shadonis there. Just gonna rip it, try and get the stack, not able to, but um, that happens sometimes. Phoenix actually thrown out, but not going to be able to get anything other than uh, potential kills here as a result, but a huge a uh, huge sound barrier comes out from Umbob, going to save his team and the mosh pit from dead on also good to help out and it's going to be a one for trade it looks like here joshua scott falling on the mouth hill but that being said we're also going to see uh lucio and rainer falling as a response so excellent play there turning it back and forth from both sides um ultimately comes out again in favor of the primates though so looking strong right now as Leoric that entire time was soaking so actually a bit of a 4v5 fight um, kind of surprised that a kill even came out for the side of Zirconian League um, for the moment gonna be looking at this next objective here looking at the XP minions actually in favor of the blue team here but Leoric has been doing his best to make up for it actually soaking a bit more than Mouthdale has but as of now with Lucio just coming back, it is going to be Zirconium League having to try and be aggressive to get onto this point. And they're struggling a little bit. Lots of AoE damage coming out from the side of the blue team with Prime Apes. Frozen, though, getting very low on the Muradin. Last Rite's going to secure the first kill, though, on to Leoric. Now it's going to be a bit of a 4v5 until Leoric, played by Shadonis here, is going to be able to get back. Uh, if he is, that's very big for the side of the red team, as uh, that basically is just a full health. Uh, teammate coming back that being said huge aoe damage once again proving to be very effective against this team and 11th ooh, barely doesn't get the channel as the uh sound barrier comes out from umbob on the lucio and these teams are still fighting for it zeratul split off to back as he was getting very low and it looks like actually somehow in the end it is going to be well, maybe not. Stahl is coming in from Stukov and from Malfail. Pet Wolverine on Rainer is now very, very low. And Zeratul is back, full on all of his resources here. <laughs> Phoenix comes out and this fight just never seems to end, but that's a kill onto Rainer. And uh, Zirconium League is all getting pretty low here. Shadonis doing his best in the back line. March of the Black King coming out for the second time this fight, but the cap is sneaked by a Weather Vane gets the channel but a kill again onto Shadonis that's going to be another stack coming in here for Mouthdale sitting at two here with the two kills that is going to be the blue team pushing into the bottom lane here Tassadar just getting back from Hearthing and uh 
Oh man, that was a very, very long fight. But in the meantime, it looks like the blue team has been able to shell down in this bottom lane with their advantage, actually up an entire level as well as the talent tier here, thanks to their six to one kills. Um, always able to barely pull out ahead in these team fights. And uh, it's, it's freezing my game a little bit. <laughs> Uh, but it's been looking pretty consistently strong in the team fights. Um, that being said, late game potential is always there for the side of our red team. As Leoric looks like he's going to be starting into a auto attack build with Spectral Leech here. Trying to get as much value, just harassing the backline on G Prime and on 11th here. Uh, even on Malthail a little bit. That being said, some 13s very big here for the blue team. Of course, you have the Bronze Beard's Rage, you have Violent Reaction, a huge playmaker, and Inevitable End gonna help out Malthiel a lot. And these living bombs have been gross, which is only gonna be helped by Pyromaniac Maniac here, going to give some cooldown reduction to the Kael'thas. It's actually getting hit by the Power Slide from Dead on. Some aggression goes out, and the Zeratul is gonna have to use Void Prison to try and help. Phoenix comes out as well. And it looks like Deadon actually going to be the one to fall here on the ETC as the Sound Barrier not quite in time. Shadonis comes in to try and get the counter engage, but it looks like it will be a nice and clean trade here in favor of the blue team. And now it's going to be a 4v5 for 20 more seconds. Zirconium League going to try and get the channel and use the Force Wall and uh, will be able to do it. So again... Losing the fight, able to get the channel. Lucio's going to try and help boost his team out, but Tassadar isn't going to have the escape there. Going to fall. Even more aggression coming out onto Umbob and Pet Wolverine. They need to be careful as this fort is dangerously low, and it is going to fall here. Uh, I don't think there's any stopping that. Map control now in for the blue team, which means even though they're down four shots here, this is where things are going to start to get very scary. A level and a bit lead for them. Um, and the level 16 talents as well means it's going to be very hard for Zirconium League to try and get this back, uh, which means the next few objectives look to go in favor of the Prime Apes here. Poke going back and forth, but I think definitely in favor of the blue team, Kael'thas and Zeratul able to poke very effectively, uh, thanks to Zeratul's mobility and of course the living bombs from Kael'thas here. And now it's uh, it seems really, really rough here for the red team to try and get any poke onto this fort. Waves are just cleared so, so quickly by the Zeratul and by the Kael'thas. And lots of damage being put onto Dead On on the ETC actually. Gonna get healed up, but uh, having to use a lot of resources to try and get any damage here. Prog Rock still not quite finished up for him as the double rotations have not been going in for the team. Um, instead of having Leoric being the one double soaking. That being said, level 16s will be here in time for the team fight if there is one as uh, lots of poke again onto dead on. Power Slide trying to catch out Zeratul, but he is going to be able to escape, actually using the Void Prison, trying to set something up. Phoenix will go out, and it's going to be ETC getting popped. Nice Storm Bolt from Frozen, going to secure that kill. The Archon trying to get something back, but not going to be able to thanks to the massive shove. Leoric again in this top lane trying to harass the mouth ale, trying to win this lane out. Ooh, but the dodge on the spooky hand tells me, oh, actually committing to the ult here from Shadonis, but that's going to be a last right stack here for Joshua Scott. A little bit of a B step, um, but Pet Wolverine and Umbob keeping up the aggression onto this bottom lane. Umbob needs to be careful though. Shadonis doesn't see, oh, there we go. All right, looks like it is going to be just the two for one trade here, which means it's going to be 10 points against three points in favor of the Prime Apes, getting them a nice three point lead on the core race here, sitting at 21 to 18. All right, for the moment, it is going to be just again, the control of this bottom lane played very, very well by the blue team. And now we're seeing really kind of desperation here. Dead on tries to power slide in for Kael'thas, but the shield at level one coming in clutch and it's just gonna result in ETC falling as well. And Umbob having to use his ult to save himself there. Um, so really just struggle after struggle as Tassadar, the next to fall, Zeratul, 
proving why he has been or <laughs> Haiva proving why Zeratul has been banned out here uh, by the side of Zirconium League in the first game. And uh, really, Zirconium League just has to try and make something happen here as level 20s are coming in very close and sappers are getting pushed across the line as well as uh, channels on the objective means that the time is limited for the side of Zirconium League if they want to try and come back. Alright, looks like we're having some more issues here. I'm trying I'm trying to do what I can. Sorry guys, I always close uh, background windows before starting up, so I'm not sure that that's going to be the issue here, but I'll try and see what I can do. Um, as for the moment, these teams are going to be trying to fight in this top lane. Lots of damage going on to Shadonis. Last Rites is available, not going to be ripped just yet, um, but the Sappers in the bottom lane means a Weather Vein is going to have to stay down there to try and defend. And the trade is just going to be one for one here. Uh, going to be five points again for the side of Prime Apes. Only three for Zirconium League. And level 20s are in with a two level advantage. It's up to Zirconium League to try and make something happen here to keep them in the game. Pressure going onto the bottom lane fort here. And it should be secured just barely, but... At what cost is the Phoenix comes out? Ooh, Power Slide barely saving the ETC here, played by Dead On. And finally, Zirconium League has a chance to try and reclaim their spot in this game. Only a level down now, thanks to the uh, XP from taking that uh, there. As Shadonis actually, with this Mithril Mace and uh, Spectral Leech here, able to do pretty well against Joshua Scott on the Malthale. Does have to be careful of the last rights, but going to be able to clear out that top lane pretty well. And actually, Zirconium League, even without level 20s, pushing in a little bit. And that's uh, very risky, as with level 20s, there's some very big power spikes here for the side of Prime Apes. You've got the Flamethrower, of course. No one can stop death, Shadow Mending, Top Off, and Unstoppable Force. But with that being said, the team fight is being forced. Level 20s are still not here for the blue team. Is Lucio going to get interrupted and not able to cast his ult? Going to be the first to fall here. It's a 4v5, and that's two more kills dead on looking at something on the ETC, but just going to have to back off and try to escape as this means uh, bottom lane likely to be recaptured and five more points taken off the core for the Prime Apes here. This is a uh, very, very scary spot as if the boss comes out as well, this is going to be one point left on the core of Zirconium League. Not much left for them to hold on here on their map choice, but we'll see if they're able to pull it off here as they have finally gotten their level 20s. It's going to be Execute, Kala's Gift, Shroud of the Dead King actually here, looking for the three seconds of Protected, the House Party and the Death Metal again coming in here for the ETC players. Shadonis going to not even bother scouting out the boss. They know that they are on it, but going to just try and clear the waves instead. Uh, trying to just keep the lanes pushed in here is dead on on the ETC going to pushing it, be pushing in the bottom lane some important quests have been finished for the blue team um, of course talking about stuff like the mithril mace and the prog rock which will help them here but they need to be careful they cannot afford um, really any deaths here or any sappers going in they're down to one core health and uh, really this is the time where they have to make the comeback happen uh, I said last game that it was about as close as you could get. The closest, the only closer thing being a uh, one health win on Towers of Doom. We'll have to see if Zirconium League is able to pull it out here. As with all five members recognizing... Oh, but a huge viral reaction and Tastar gets popped. That is the risk of that auto attack build as it did draw the tower aggro to him. Hyperion is going to get a lot of damage onto the keep, but now it's 4v5. Zirconium League needs to make something happen. This is their last di last ditch effort as Hyva is coming in on the Zeratul. Going to try and jump onto Pet Wolverine, but not get much from it. March of uh, the Black King going to come out from Shadonis on the Leoric, but it's a 4v5 once again, and the Sappers are going to come in soon, as well as the objective. A Mosh comes out, going to get interrupted with Void Prison coming out as well from the blue team, and I think that is it. Not much going to be able to save them here as the sappers go through, and that is game number two going to Prime Apes here. Winning pretty dominantly here on Towers of Doom.
Wow, that was uh, that was impressive. I had uh, no doubt that Prime Apes could take the game, uh, given their performance in Game One. But I was not expecting it to be uh, really that much of a kill shutout there, as we did see. Really, the early game only going to the side of Zirconium League. I think thanks to the Leoric value, being able to respawn and give them an advantage in team fights where they were down members. Um, but as soon as that advantage was gone. Uh, with the longer death timers, they were not really able to do much of anything there. And Prime Apes coming out on top. Kilthas, G played by G Prime, who's going to again top the damage for the game. Pet Wolverine did do very well on the Rainer there, but in the end, it was uh, it was the blue team that came out on top. As uh, <laughs> Zeratul was really, really impressive with that full. Cleave build, something that you don't see very often, but able to use it to set up the huge flame strikes as well as the huge cleaves, which saw um, even ETC getting popped by the combos there. All right, so that's one one to one. Like I said, I expected this to go to. Um, I did expect for this to go to a third map. Um, I had very little doubt that it would. I expected these teams to be very evenly matched, um, but I wasn't really quite sure um, who would win. And it looks like Prime Apes are going to try and make an argument here that they are the ones uh, who should be coming out on top. Is that was a disgusting game? Like they uh, they made the Zero Tool work uh, with the Void Prison, uh, really without too much follow up, uh, in my opinion. Uh, but able to show that their coordination is insane and they're gonna take us to a map that I have not seen I think once and a map that I don't know super well actually to be honest it's gonna be Braxis holdout here the pick from the side of the prime apes so uh, interesting map pick not something you see very often um, I believe Zirconium League has played on this map and has chosen this map. So this is a map that they're not going to be super uncomfortable on. Um, if memory... Uh, if memory serves. But uh, so far... I Yeah, I don't know. I don't really know what to expect here. I think uh, the offlane play has been very big. Both games. Uh, Malthil doing excellently as well as the Varian, but then Shadonis on the Zul and Leoric also able to pull out some pretty big plays for the team. So we'll have to watch that as especially on this map, offlane is really big. Uh, sometimes you even see a 1-3-1 with almost like two offlanes um, and then a three-man gank squad trying to control camps and the uh, using ganks to get advantages uh, around the map. So we'll have to see what ends up happening here. Uh, from these two teams as we're getting our members into the lobby. Looks like it is going to be the same five members for Zirconium League as on the last map. So gonna go with Umbob and Pet Wolverine here again over uh, Tlems and Lulu who we saw in the first map there. Um, I will say Tlems played a really pretty mean tracer. I think that was very impressive. Um, it wasn't enough, I think, on its own to come out on top. I think, honestly, the Zul Poison Nova at 20 uh, kind of single-handedly won them the last team fight there. But uh, I think, uh, it, I don't know, it'll be interesting. I think there's some real power picks for both sides. And we need to see Prime Apes uh, respected. <laughs> All right, some confusion because uh, I was currently under the uh, the blue team. I was on the blue team currently, and they were trying to figure out who wasn't in the lobby, and they're like, hey, can you invite Hydra? I can't. It shows he's in a game. And it's because I was already in the uh, lobby. They were uh, missing one of their own members, actually. But looks like we should be ready to jump into this next map as soon as the players are. Uh, and I'm pretty excited to see it. This is going to be a close one, I think, uh, hopefully closer than uh, the last game. 
That being said, I think the late game potential for the blue team <laughs> has been pretty, pretty strong. So we'll have to see if they're able to uh, hold on until the late game as Braxis can be a very, very early game base map with how powerful the Zerg waves are. <laughs> All right, so just gonna be waiting on the teams here. I think we're having a bio break going on for one of them. So we should hopefully be jumping into this Braxis match as soon as possible. Uh, lobby looks good, and I think we should hopefully be starting any moment. We have one team ready, uh, and the other team looks like they're just making sure that they've got the lobby set up. It is Everything is right that I can see. Uh, players on the right team, first pick is right. But uh, yeah, I gotta say, I think Zirconium League needs to find a way into these team fights. Uh, Hiva on the Maev and the Zera tool, as well as um, G Prime on the Junkrat and the Kael'thas. They have been kind of dominating these team fights from the damage position. So we need to see Zirconium League either choke them out or find their own power picks so that they can start taking these team fights and winning them uh, where they've been struggling throughout the series. And the instant Zero Tool ban, not dealing with it again, even on a more early game focused map, it was effective in the early game and in the late game it was uh, more than effective it was destructive and uh, gonna gonna just be taken away uh, looks like primates gonna be able to ban out here next and I don't know what they banned to be honest they banned the Zul last game um, gonna ban Johanna again who has been a pretty consistent ban throughout the series, not wanting to have to deal with her as a tank, which makes sense because they've been playing a lot around CC um, and around blow-ups, which Johanna is really hard to CC and really hard to blow up. So taking that away is a very good tool for them. And she can be very disruptive to that kind of play style, I believe. Kael'thas gonna be the ban next. So both the DPS from last game getting respected here. And uh, I think rightfully so. I don't think there's any arguing whether or not that was uh, the, 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 that was good play from those uh, players with G Prime and Hyba. Uh, it was kind of scary what they were able to pull off in the late game there. And now, last ban for the opening phase is going to be onto Rexar. He's uh, he's the king of Dragonshire for winning the offlane and lesser known as the king of Brax's holdout for, again, the same reason, able to win out that solo lane. But it looks like even without the double rotations and with the importance placed on the 1v1, Shadonis feels confident in the Zul and is going to pick it up first here. Hoping to win again with it on this second map or third map here to get their second win to take the series as Sylvanas finally gets seen in play here, picked by G Prime as Chen, the offlane pick into Zul, played by Joshua Scott here for the Prime Apes. Next two picks will be here for before the final bands, and they are on the side of Zirconium League. What are we gonna see in the four man uh, or well, with the rest of the team, uh, it's going to be a Jaina and Raynor, super synergistic combination there. Um, easy to play heroes, and I think I can appreciate that. Um, Raynor was played very excellently, and a Weather Vane on the Tassadar hasn't been able to get as much as maybe they were hoping for uh, so far in the series. So going into a mage who's able to maybe be a bit more consistent, it, I don't think that's a bad play, and I think it can definitely be strong for them here is the Lucio. Going to be banned out as the healer choke comes in for the side of Prime Apes as they'll have the next two picks here. Will Zirconium League try to choke the healers more here? I know there was a very, very clutch violent reaction last game, and it is going to be the Stukov respected and taken away here from 11th, uh, who played that very well and obviously a very strong healer for the map as well. That being said, it is Prime Apes who pick next, so they should be able to get the healer that they want here before Zirconium League, as well as uh, still missing the tank and a damage dealer here for them. 
Paiva been playing melee assassins so far here. Uh, not sure if we'll see one again picked up. They're going to go ahead and wait on Hiva's pick here. Picking up the Malganus as the main tank and Deckard for 11th played again here. Uh, we saw a bit more spell damage focused uh, build from Deckard in the first game. Going to have to see if they pull it out again, if it'll work out for them. As the last two picks of Zirconium League... This, uh, this draft has to win the map and win the series. What are the picks going to be? It's going to be ETC for uh, Dead On and Umbob going to be on Malfurion. All around solid heroes. Looking at the draft of Zirconium League, I see a composition that is uh, really just a lot of standard and uh, vanilla kind of heroes, which uh, I like to see because I think it means that they're going to put the burden of execution on Prime Apes, they're saying, Prime Apes, you have to execute really strong team fighting and coordination to beat our draft. That being said, Prime Apes have shown to be able to do that. And the last pick, Phoenix here for Hiva, as they're going to try and pull it off, get the reverse sweep here. All right. Um, Draft-wise, I think... Uh, I don't know. I'm a little bit worried. I'm not sure that Zul is able to give as much value in the offlane in this kind of scenario for the red team here. And that kind of worries me a little bit because they put such a high priority onto it. Um, we'll have to see if it ends up working out or not here as the primates seem to be getting pretty comfortable drafts every single game here. Um, and I, I think uh, there's some very, very strong potential for them. That being said, as I mentioned, like low burden of execution for the red team is always, I think, a good thing when you're looking at uh, coordinated play. Because if you aren't having to, if you're, if the burden of execution on your team is lower, then it's on the enemy team to outplay you consistently, and any mistake can be much more punishing against uh, a team like this. So I think smart drafting from both sides overall playing to their strengths here. Let's go into this last map. On the left, four prime apes, we have G prime on the Sylvanas, Hiva on Phoenix, uh, 11th on Deckard, Frozen on Malganus, and Joshua Scott in the offlane on Chen. Against them, it is going to be Zirconium League with Shadonis on Zul, a Weathervane on Jaina, Dead on on ETC, Pet Wolverine on Raynor, and Umbob on Malfurion. Sticking with the roster from last map to try and take it home for the series. Both teams gonna go ahead and walk into the middle lane or into the into the middle of the lane here as a big root actually comes out on Frozen and Hiva and finally seeing the pressure coming out from the side of Zirconium League, they're gonna get first blood and take out Phoenix nice and early. Nice early, early uh, work here, but we'll see if it continues throughout the game as Zirconium League have to be feeling good though about that. I think that's definitely a confidence booster for them as they uh, struggled the first game, were barely able to take it with a nice last minute comeback and this is going to help them out after the last game uh, where their confidence might have struggled a little bit after that. Top lane, uh, we do have the Eye of the Tiger for Chen. So looking for the additional self-sustain and auto-attack here. Again, Sewell, who did go for Shackler, looking for the cooldown reduction for the extra sustain there. And going to be pushing in against Chen very effectively. We'll see if that works out for them. As for the moment, it's going to be the blue team just chilling around the lane while we see three members of Zirconium League already working on the bruisers, trying to get the extra pressure out on the map. All right, Sylvanas, worth noting, did go into the Shadow Dagger level one here with Unfurling Shadow, so going to try and stack up, get some big late game AOE damage. But if uh, if they're not able to get that, and if they're not able to have a strong enough early game, they could be struggling here as Malganus taken out and dead on, followed up by Umbob with this Malfurion is looking like a completely different team here for the side of Zirconium League as they're going to get the early channel onto this point here on Braxis and Power Slide onto Hiva on the Phoenix not going to be able to interrupt the blink but taking out the shield and uh, getting some nice chunk out so 
really playing well so far, though Shadonis in the top lane, uh, struggling a little bit into Chen, whose sustain is kind of ridiculous um, uh, against a hero who doesn't have quite so much burst right now. We do see Arsenal Synergy, the level 1 pickup here for Phoenix, so looking for uh, the harder, the higher <laughs> execution uh, talent there at level 1, able to get some long ranged burst to finish off kills, but the picks in the bottom lane are consistent for Zirconium League and they're looking very strong so far. 3-0 in kills and uh, almost a level lead here already. That being said, as I mentioned, wait, Zul actually not struggling, it's Joshua Scott who is struggling here, taking a ton of damage from the Jailers here at level 4 from Zul, and uh, that's going to help out a lot and start the channel here for Zirconium League once again here on Brax's Power Slide, nice interrupt onto Frozen, just trying to make sure that they're keeping uh, the aggression off of their back line and able to get some nice pickups here as Frozen needs to be careful once again but dead on actually getting chunked very heavily by Phoenix and Sylvanas the double sustain damage here for the blue team working out pretty well when the blowups aren't coming out from a wave weather rain on this Jaina and uh, going to be able to slow down the progress here 40% right now for Zirconium League as Pet Wolverine getting aggressive in the bush but going to get uh, some damage put out back onto him here. Frozen gonna have to back up, or actually use his peel there with the sleep on the Melganis, and actually looking like Prime Apes kind of finding their footing again in this bottom lane, able to start to take it back here from Zirconium League. Uh, Ruby obviously going to definitely help out with that as it's going to give a lot of sustain to Frozen, who has been getting chunked pretty heavily in this front line. Uh, that being said, in the top lane, Zul doing pretty well into the Chen right now. Um, so we'll have to keep an eye on the health bars up there and keep an eye on who's controlling the point. As right now, it's going to be the red team. But red team also getting another kill onto Sylvanas here. Uh, doing so good at following up on this ETC power slide. Very well played by a Weathervane there on the Jaina. And the progress again ticking up here. Up to 80% almost. Um, looks like 90% about going to be what they get here. Uh, for the side of Zirconium League, so already guaranteeing a nice sized Zerg wave if they don't get the entire thing, which they will with the level 7 talents. Chen even forced to hearth in the top lane here. So the Zul pick working out for them so far. Chen not able to counter it for the moment. And uh, now big Zerg wave with a one level advantage coming in for Zirconium League. Uh, there will be sevens in time for Prime Apes, but this uh, isn't going to be an easy defense as the Zerg Wave is a very oppressive, uh, very oppressive objective and not able to be shut down by Sylvanas, who really wants to be able to get that early uh, aggression. But two kills will help out as Chen able to get the kill onto Zul in the top lane with what little Zerg they had and. The tower aggroing onto Jaina as she deals damage to an enemy hero is going to mean that she falls as well. So, a nice little comeback there from Prime Apes and a sigh of relief as they're going to be able to hold onto their fort in the top lane and get a little bit of pressure, or in the bottom lane, get a bit of pressure in the top lane. That being said, Zirconium League, I think, still holding the advantage. Um, they've got the they've got the fountain down here in the bottom lane and they're able to get onto their bruiser camps again to help them out pushing in uh, against this fort here potentially as Sylvanas gonna be pushing in against the wave here for the side of the prime apes but respect shown and uh, this is something that we haven't seen prime apes have to face so far in this series. So far it's been them consistently uh, dictating how the matches go, how the team fights go, but now they're the ones uh, being shown to have to respond. And uh, the rotations from Zirconium League have been great. Dead on actually playing really aggressive. I don't think that uh, the red, the blue team realizes that he's on his own as they just do now. But he's going to be able to get out nice and easily, and that is going to be the camp taken in the top lane for the side of Zirconium League. Going to help out Shadonis as he pushes in against this Chen here. Gonna have to use the flying kick to get out. Level 10s will be here very shortly for Zirconium League, which means it's gonna be a risky moment for the side of Prime Apes. 
Luckily, Objective has not spawned just yet, but they're going to have to back up as we do see. This time, the Skeletal Mages, as well as Ring of Frost, Tranquility, the Mosh Pit, and Rainer currently holding, but goes for Hyperion. Looking at the damage so far, it's been Jaina holding out the top damage for her team. Chen putting a ton of damage in at the top lane, uh, as well as Zul actually just overcoming Jaina now. Uh, as you would expect on such a solo lane focused map, uh, actually right now with the siege pressure from that camp and Chen's wave clear really struggling, it's going to be Hyva rotating up on the Phoenix, which means bottom fort pressured in, uh, not going to get quite taken, but some good chunk put onto it by the side of Zirconium League. And again, the pressure is on. Level 10s are in though. And the five man rotation coming in from the side of the blue team. Joshua Scott on the Chen jumping in, has the Panda Pals if he needs them. Uh, Frozen also with the potential save onto himself with the Carrion Swarm. So very important talents there for the front line. But we also see the Wailing Arrow, the Purification Salvo, and the Stay a While and Listen finishing out the ults for the side of the Primates. <laughs> Once again, the early channel in favor of Zirconium League. Frozen getting chunked super heavily. Carrion Swarm will be out in time, and now it's time for the Primates to try and get their counter engage, but not going to be able to, it looks like, as Pet Wolverine putting tons of pressure in on, on the side end of Weather Vane with Dead On and Umbob really just controlling the front line. Excellent play so far as the Mosh lands only onto Malganus, or the ring only lands on Malganus, but 11th on the Deckard, not able to heal him up as they were in the Mosh pit. That being said, great salvo comes out from Phoenix, going to finish off Rainer, and it looks like the ult used in the top lane by Joshua Scott to finish off Zul. So, finally, channel starts up for the side of the Primates. They are without a tank, so I'm not sure for how long they'll be able to, as G Prime getting chunked in here by a Weather Bane. Um, and Dead On also get taking a ton of damage, going to be able, oh, not actually able to escape. And that is the power of Arsenal Synergy there. Haiba able to get the last hit with the huge burst splash attack from long range. Shadonis will have his ult up well before uh, Joshua Scott here on the Chen. So we might see him take back the top lane, but for the moment there's no tank for Zirconium League in the bottom lane. And it's looking like they might actually lose this objective. That being said, they did get the 82% on their own wave. So even if they lose it, they're not hurting too badly and should likely get a fort in uh, a lane of their choosing as they're actually going to go even for the siege camp here before the zerg waves spawn in. But in the bottom lane now, with the siege camp actually started by the other team as well, um, it's going to be it's gonna be basically just both teams looking to push actually with the off laners defending. And we'll see who that favors as Sylvanas going to give a lot of push pressure and Zul not going to be able to do much more than spawn in his mages and try and play it safe. Uh, make sure that he isn't falling here as Chen not going to be able to do anything in the top lane against this Zerg wave. Um, but with the earlier take onto the fort, it's looking uh, like this might favor the side of Zirconium League and two, nope, all members other than Sylvanas, and there she goes, all members of our blue team going to be backing interrupt onto Chen's ult, going to be the kill onto him, using Ring of Frost for it, um, but going to be worth it, I think, as Hyperion comes out and push onto the keep for Zirconium League. Wailing Arrow comes out to try and dissuade them, but I think the damage is done, and it is keep falls in top lane, and Mosh onto Phoenix. That's another kill for Zirconium League. Gonna look for more, potentially onto Frozen here on the Malganus, as he's gonna be forced into the Carrion Swarm once again, and this Decker Kane just not able to keep up with the insane burst potential of the Rainer and Jaina showing the synergy and why that combo is classically picked together here on Brax's holdout with Shidonis able to clear up the bottom lane for his team and make sure that they aren't losing a keep there. Clear onto the Zerg, actually going to be a little bit slow which is kind of bad here for Zirconium League as they're looking to invade onto this Bruiser but Chen and, uh, Malga and Phoenix are back up. If it was Phoenix who died, I, I might be wrong. But all is well for them. They're going to be able to get the Bruiser Camp as well as Shadonis going to be able to push in the bottom lane, actually using his ult there just to secure the fort. And now the map is dominated by Zirconium League. Like I said, this map was picked by the blue team, but I think uh, maybe they were doing it not knowing that Zirconium League has played here. They have chosen this map and they're showing 
uh, how they are confident here as they're looking for aggression here. Both teams scouting each other out though. Ooh, Phoenix gets met with the power slide as well as the hood, but the warp comes out and now it's the counter engage with Chen. This is what he is known for. He's able to get the huge, huge jump onto multiple members and it's going to be uh, Malfurion falling first. Shadonis on the Zul trying to get away. But, oh, will he be able to? Sitting at so little health, the, the uh, face melt saving his life there. Actually, <laughs> whew, Zirconium League managing to only lose one member there while they did have the camp and a catapult in the top lane, actually getting the core down to 88%. So losing a member does hurt them, but the 12% on core, you gotta be happy with that as, a, uh, as the counter pressure there is now. They're looking potentially make sure that there isn't an attempt against the boss from the side of the Prime Apes. Now both teams just going to make sure they're taking their camps and keeping the map uh, nice and level here. Looking at the team fights, it has been evened up here. Um, only six, there are six kills to seven here in favor of Zirconium League, but it has been looking pretty strong recently for the side of the Prime Apes will have to see if their late game potential is able to save them here as they're down both of their forts so their sustain won't be here uh, for this objective phase um, in the form of those fountains as well as the escape point gone. They're going to have to try and uh, take advantages where they can and use the current even talent situation to uh, get some advantage for themselves. Looking at the stats again, Jaina now once again on top with Raynor and Zul right behind not as high damage as the Phoenix or the Sylvanas, but it's been very meaningful damage from the side of Zirconium League. Um, it seems like wherever they put their abilities, they are getting a kill, um, or at least forcing the enemy team to back off, giving them the objective. And it looks like Frozen is going to be the target here once again for them as Ring of Frost goes out actually just to try and save them. This engage is going terribly wrong for them as a huge panda cows comes out as well as the salvo going to take out Malfurion first. Mosh Pit doesn't get anything and now dead on on the ETC as well as a weather being very low. All members of Zirconium League falling low here and they're going to be forced into retreat as their healer is down and the regrowths have worn off. And now we're seeing potentially the comeback for Prime Apes as they are uh, starting the channel onto this objective able to get 74% uh, before the rotation comes in from Zirconium League to stop the channel in the bottom lane dead on wisely staying up top here knowing that the side of Prime Apes would have to rotate to meet it and now looking for a bit of a bush gank as Shadonis going to uh, clear the wave maybe trying to bait out a little bit of aggression here Ooh, the power slide goes out onto Sylvanas and she is disappearing here. Great play once again from, and great coordination from the side of Zirconium League. Just when it looks like Prime Apes may be able to come back, caught unawares once again. And this ETC Jaina has been working out so well for the red team so far. That being said, Luckily, Shadonis not able to control top uh, against the Prime Apes, so that is the lucky thing for them, that is. But now, teamfight potentially being forced against them as the Power Slide comes in from dead on. Ring of Frost not going to land onto anything, I think, very, very early from a Weathervane, but it is still a 4v5 fight as Sylvanas not up for a long time here. And that is going to mean that the objective is going to be channeled here. Ults used by both sides. Actually, Skeletal Mage is going to lock down Chen. He doesn't have his ult for a few seconds here. And he is very likely to go down. Purification Salvo used just to try and disengage. But only going to be enough to get Deckard out. Um, <laughs> but not Malganus as ETC barely kept up by Umbob. Playing so excellently on this Malfurion. Uh, and that is a full Zerg wave for the side of Zirconium League. Not able to quite get to the boss, but going to be able to invade the bruiser camp here of the Prime Apes. And now with a huge Zerg wave in the bottom lane, they're going to be trying to get the second keep of the game here. Uh, Zerg wave should be able to get the top fort, so they do need to be careful, because if they don't get this keep, it will be um, very favorable for the side of the Prime Apes. But with two dead, I think they should definitely be able to make that play for the keep, uh, as well as even potentially the core if they... Uh, if they play it well here, we'll have to watch the defenses. It's all on 
the DPS here to clear up this wave and maybe try and find some picks onto the side of Zirconium League. Dead on though, getting aggressive on the ETC. Ring of Frost, again, whiffing and not catching anything, but this is a pretty healthy Zerg wave pushing in against the core here. Frozen on the Malgana is going to try and help his team as the Panda Pals pop for the engage. Gonna get stunned out into Mosh Pit onto all of the Panda Pals. There's no engage coming out from them. And it's going to be Chen falling, all three of the Storm, Earth, and Fire falling. Malganus has to use his ult to try and keep himself alive, but now it is a 4v5 and Hyperion out onto the core. Frozen will fall on the Malganus, and it's looking like Zirconium League is going to try and end this game. Dead on on the ETC does get kind of low, but with the root onto G Prime, <gasps> actually able to get away, but Phoenix falls. It's three down for the side of Prime Apes, only Sylvanas and Deckard alive against uh, the Zul who is coming in here, as well as Pet will bring in on the Rainer and Umbob on the Malfurion, 16% on core. Will they be able to hold out? Shadonis comes in with the huge route onto Sylvanas. G Prime barely able to escape, but it doesn't matter. That is game number three going to Zirconium League. Well, uh, that was insane. Uh, I was, honestly, I was expecting Prime Apes to uh, do what they had done so far and just dominate the team fights and then not not struggle because the early game is so important here on Braxis uh, when compared to other maps. But Shadonis again proving that his offlane power on Zul uh, and the rest of the team doing excellently, um, able to consistently push away uh, and just get picks over and over. So even when they lost the objective, they had a huge wave coming in for themselves and were able to get more value ultimately than the other team uh, shows some great knowledge of the map uh, which is definitely not an easy thing that map is not an easy map to play let's see if we can't get a interview coming in here with Shadonis uh, all right I'll go ahead and hop in the lobby here But yeah, I don't know. I don't know what to say. That was a super, super impressive from the side of Zirconium League, uh, able to pull it out where I felt like they uh, they had been struggling so far. All right, gonna go ahead and send the invite there. Sorry for the interview, and we can hopefully jump into that here, um, as that was a really intense back and forth series. Um, as I said at the start, these teams have both played super well, taking maps when they lost and uh, able to play to up to par with teams that maybe you might have thought would be stronger. All right, looks like uh, they were just waiting for a whisper in HOTS, so uh, just missed the communication there, but they should hopefully be here soon. Um, and yeah, that was a really impressive play from Zirconium League on the third map. Um, coming back from what looked like a struggle. Hello! Hey, how are you doing? Eh, <laughs> a little stressed out. Yeah, understandably slow. So that was a insane series. Uh, you guys pulled it back in game three and uh, I, I gotta say, I was impressed. Thank you. All right, so let, let's go ahead and start off. Um, so what what were your thoughts coming into this match? You obviously did some of your research, um, but what were your thoughts, what were your fears, uh, and what were you thinking of the matchup coming in? So we were definitely worried about their Zera tool. Uh, we did a lot of scouting. We saw a lot of their strengths, a lot of their weaknesses, and we figured that their strengths uh, were easily countered by our strengths, and their weaknesses were easily exploitable by our uh, strengths. Um, and it was definitely closer than we had initially thought. Uh, they pulled out some different strengths and some different weaknesses than we had scouted. 
frankly, it seemed like we were facing a completely different team than we had scouted. <laughs> I've been there. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, but all around, it was definitely a fun match. Uh, and all the expectations that we had going into it uh, were broken pretty quick. So, makes it even more fun. Definitely. So, let's talk about game one. Um, obviously, the early game was a struggle. So, what was going through... Uh, your heads and how did how did you get back into the game to ultimately take it in the end there so frankly the big issue was the fact that both of our front line were just getting poked down and our back liners just weren't like ready quick enough so both me and the tank literally just said okay we need to go in <laughs> yeah yeah and uh then we started going in and with a fully online Zul going in, it's it's a lot of damage I was able to mitigate and a lot of damage I was able to dish. And yeah, that that took him down. Yeah, I, got, I, I gotta say, I don't think I've ever seen more yellow on health bars uh, than in that uh, last team fight on the point <laughs> there. It seemed like your poison, I think your poison Nova hit all five members and uh, you were just immortal living in the middle of their team. Uh, so. Mm -hmm. Good, good stuff there, but let's talk about game two now. Um, was that just maybe a bit of overconfidence, uh, letting the zero tool through, or what do you think happened there? Uh, so, it wasn't overconfidence. When we scouted, we saw that they usually hold it uh, until after mm. the ban phase, and we figured that it would work out and we'd be able to counter him. But he was obviously very, very comfortable on Zeratul, more so than uh, we gave him credit for. So it was one of those things where I scouted, I saw most of what he was capable of, and said, he needs to be off Zeratul. And my team managed to convince me away from it, <laughs> and we paid for it. Yeah, well, I, I can't say I haven't been in the exact same spot. Uh... <laughs> That's definitely the struggle of the one who's doing the scouting, but you brought it back in game three, and so you guys, I believe, play Braxis, am I correct? Like, that's correct. a map that's comfortable for you. So, oh, yeah. uh, do you think that they didn't do their research? Because I gotta say, Braxis, I pretty much only see it picked as a kind of um, caught you with your pants down, like, I know no one plays this map, so we're gonna pick it to try and win. Um, and you guys looked like a completely different team on that map. So I think they did their scouting this season and probably a little bit of last season and also realized that our solo laner switched because I was uh, on heals last season and not on solo lane. And the reason why we were comfortable was because, uh, frankly, Colonel Pants, I'm sure he's watching right now, uh, was just a dominating force in Div C. There was only one solo laner who could hold a candle to him. Right. Um, and that's why we loved Braxis, and that's why we loved D Shire, and it's just not a thing. We don't have it as strong of a solo laner this season, uh, and so we haven't really gone to it. And I'm guessing that they used, kind of figured, okay, they switched their solo laners. He doesn't seem as comfortable. Let's take him there, and our solo laner can beat him. And I was able to do my little dance between lane and point and generate enough pressure to stay in the game at the very least. Definitely. Uh, kudos to you for that, uh, for sure. I think uh, playing solo lane myself this season, I know that anything into Chen can be a bit of a rough matchup, but you uh, were able to control the point really for the majority of the game, so great stuff there. And uh, I have one last question before I'll let you get mm -hmm. to shoutouts. Uh, I like to ask this as much as I can. But if you had to give an MVP to any player, could be on your team or the enemy team, for the series, who would you give the MVP to? Well, uh, thanks to the new system on the site, I actually do have to think about that question. <laughs> uh, in general, I let my team vote on uh, who they think uh, deserves MVP, either our team or their team. Um, personally... I'm not entirely sure. I'd like to say probably Umbob. I obviously didn't see too many of them, but from what I heard, his roots following up the ETC slides 
were the cause of pretty much all of the deaths on the enemy team uh, in the third game. Uh, yeah, they definitely came in clutch because looking at Sylvanas and Phoenix, those are both heroes with escapes, but he was uh, locking them down great. Um, and really just mm -hmm. overall, I think all members of both teams uh, were very impressive. Uh, two teams I could definitely see making it to the playoffs. So uh, best of luck to you guys with the rest of your season. Uh, the floor is yours for Thank shout uh, so as always, I'd like to shout out my friends and family that join me for every single one of our games over the this <laughs> season and the last season. Um, they've been fantastic and wonderful and amazingly supportive. Uh, I'd like to shout out both wonderful teams. It was, like I said, it was a really solid matchup. Uh, a lot of what we scouted ended up not being super useful, and it takes <laughs> a pretty solid team to change up that aggressively and that quickly and uh last but not least bow before kalthazad <laughs> all right well thank you shadonis uh you guys put on a great series uh have a great one i think that was a u2 he's been having some mic issues so uh but that's it that's all i got for tonight that was a insane series um uh, I, I gotta say, I I was uh, I thought I knew who a winner the winner would be uh, after game two, and that, I think that was the only point I thought I knew who the winner would be, and I ended up being proved wrong. So excellent play from Shadonis and Co. Uh, over at Zirconium League, uh, gonna pull uh, up in the standings here, and Div C East has been looking insanely competitive. Um, hopefully, you guys will continue following through with the division and with NGS here. Um, thank you everyone who came out tonight for the cast. This has been all for me, but I'm going to try and find us a raid so that you guys can keep seeing some of the great heroes action that has been going on tonight. Um, let me go ahead and take a look at some of the matchups that are going on at the current moment. Um, all right, you know what? Let's go ahead and raid a good friend of mine. You, I am, I'm certain you know him. Um, good friend of mine, King Andrew, on, or Maestro, we're going to go ahead and raid over to him. Uh, make sure to show him some love. Let him know that this was a great series and uh, that you appreciate him for his superior <laughs> bit rate. Um, thanks, Ryokai, for the follow last moment. Appreciate it. Um, but we're going to go head on over to that, and uh, I'll catch you all another time. See you.